Uh, I give you the microphone. No, no. from Taiwan. Uh, uh, recently, recent years, uh, we have a huge progress about adopting ODF and uh, also LibreOffice in Taiwan. But uh, because this is not the topic of today's talk, so if you are interested in Taiwan's story, uh, just a few days before the join up, the OSOR, they had a case study of Taiwanese government, uh, how to do that, and uh, what do we have done, and what's our thoughts. So uh, I recommend you to read this one about what we have done in Taiwan. And today I'm going to live demo you another problem we need to solve. Uh, during uh, this year, we, we find another problem. Uh, because the, what we have done so far is, is about crime. That means uh, users use LibreOffice or use our derivatives from LibreOffice to generate ODF files and attach it in the mail or official document. But there is still another problem is here. Usually, it would be the from the server, because always we have uh, many servers, many services that need to generate reports. And this is the current flow. Uh, if uh, in an agency, a user needs to uh, generate report from the server and send it to, to another unit, he will, he will say, oh, I want this and that report, and uh, send this request to who? to sysadmin. He managed the servers, but the user does not re generate the report himself. He requires the sysadmin uh, to have, uh, which manage many servers, and uh, because most of the databases are, are here, so uh, they would need to generate here. And uh, each server needs a module, a dedicated module, to generate this support. That's because of license issue. And uh, then later, I'll tell you uh, what kind of report they generate and what is the module in the next page, okay? Almost all, not, maybe not all, but almost all of the module that, uh, that would need to be integrated into the information system is this. It's called the CRISPR report. I don't know if uh, any of you know this. It will just uh, get some input and generate a report to you. But this CRISPR report, if we see what file format it exports, you will find that no ODF. So now our uh, people, in, uh, users in our agency face a problem. Because our service, our service does not generate ODF format report, but they are asked to send reports and any attachments in ODF. So, can I directly can I directly convert it? Mostly, it will be saved as Microsoft format. Maybe DOC, maybe DOCX, maybe XLS. But if we directly open it in LibreOffice, that would be like this. I can directly live demo to you. This file is a typical, typical crystal report, generated report. 
And uh, if we directly open, uh, the, the, you can see that the file extension is still C, right? But if we open it with LibreOffice, it will become like this. Here is the content, but you will see a lot of strange comments. Here, here, a lot. And uh, something is wrong, anything. And if you really see what it is, you find out that actually, actually, it is HTML. So that, that means the CRISPR report, CRISPR report generates files in HTML but named it in DOC or in XLS. And uh, amazingly that Microsoft Word and Excel can open it correctly. <laughs> but in LibreOffice, we have problem. It, it, it's not easy to directly convert such kind of DOC or XLS to ODT or ODS. So this is the screenshot. Okay, actually it is an HTML file. Besides this converting problem, there are also other annoying problems like this. First, you can see that uh, almost all the servers, almost all the server needs one module installed there. But we have many, many public agencies, different uh, counties, cities, so many different units, they may use different version of CRISPR retour and uh, they may generate different version of format. Okay, that's one of the problem. It's difficult to integrate with each other because it has no standard. The second is that each single server needs to install one crystal report. Crystal report, okay. It's because of license issue. So if we have 10 servers managed to, to generate reports, we need to have 10 modules integrate into those. They may be, maybe there are different servers, different services on those servers, but each one will need to integrate once. Okay, so it's difficult, also difficult to manage so many different servers or difficult to integrate them together. So, okay, then uh, some developers in, in the government will say, okay, if so, let us generate ODF directly. So they will do that this way. They would create a standard ODF like ODT and uh, put everything inside. But then what they need to do, they, when they need to generate report, they need to extract this ODT and find the content they want to replace in many XML tags and then replace it, pack it back. What if the, uh, the layout or the, the fields changes? So though all this work needs to do again. So it is also a pain for, for those system admins to directly generate all the report because it should be multiple data, uh, uh, dynamic data. But they can only generate one uh, let's say one template, but they need to change, uh, replace the data with the, inside the XML tag and then pack back. So, uh, from last year, our National Development Council, that's the main uh, unit that's responsible for promote ODF and, uh, and uh, uh, make it the national policy. Okay, so they ask our local developers, a, a company named OSSII, now they do the service from open office to LibreOffice. Uh, it's more than 10 years. So, so uh, we, we, we all are together uh, to promote ODF in Taiwan. So they ask them to develop this we we'll call NDC ODF API service. Okay, now let me show you. Uh, it's the steps to generate a report is very simple. The first one is to build a server. I will, I will show you step by step and the live demo to you later. 
Okay, we just need to create a server first and create a report template. The second step, I would tell you, it will be done by the user, not sysadmin. And upload to this server and get a RESTful API. Then what the server needs to do is only to send a URL, send a URI, calling the server's API to generate uh, with data, and then it would, the report will be generated. Okay, that's the first is, we can see create a server. We have put it on GitHub, so you can find it in the GitHub. Uh, if I NDC ODF and the, here's API service. Okay. Uh, then we have a demo server here. This one is the demo server built on our NDC office, uh, the, the the machine room. Okay. Uh, so this is a uh, uh, demo. So of course, it, it has to log in. Okay, you you can you can have different account and the credentials. So let's let me log in again. Okay, this is the first. We have already built a service. Then the second, the second step is to create a report. Now I will uh, direct a demo. This one, this this one is uh, uh, LibreOffice derivations. It is custom by LibreOffice 5.2.7, and uh, this NDC OTF application tool is sim uh, the target of this is very simple because many users in the public agencies they have no idea which version of LibreOffice they want to use, and then they have no idea what is so free software. So we just tell them if you now you need to generate audio files, you just use this. It is, and I, less, uh, in 2017, the audio preface, I also tested that. Okay, so uh, this is currently in government, this is the most, uh, most use of this. Okay, and uh, we have a tool. This is a wizard to generate the template, so it's simple to generate it. Okay, let's start demo. Import template, and uh, always remember to use the style. Okay. And then here we put many fields, data fields inside it. The field, the name of the field can be in Chinese, and here are the the uh, the different kind of fields. Okay. Then we have a few here. And uh, because this template is created by users, but they need to let the sysadmin know what it is. So sometimes we will add some, some comments here. Okay, and then let's put a date here. Then we put a table. Okay, we put a field name here, here, and uh, sorry, <laughs> here. Also, we have the the checkbox. Okay, so if it is. We can say if this report is credential or not. Okay. Then this is a demo temporary, but sometimes we need uh, some fields we need to be repeated. So we choose this field and put here. This is repeatable. Okay. Then uh, the simple. Template is generated. We save it as. Oh, okay. As OTT text template, demo report template. Okay. 
After saving it, we can close that. And then, back to this system, I just need to upload. I just need to upload this. Demo report for first thing. And this is the category. The, the, in the government, there may be many different category of reports, right? Then we upload it, OTT file. After uploading it, here, it's here, and you can see this is a JSON format example. This is YAM format example. And if we click this, you can see this. This is the API URL. So you just copy that. And here are the demo, uh, the uh, example format of JSON and YML. So we copy it. Now, we upload, and uh, then we use uh, Swagger.io to simulate the server-side behavior. It's here. Uh, in, in this, uh, the API we just generated, it follows um, a spec named Open API spec. I'm not sure if it's version two or version three, but we follow that spec. Okay, and uh, now th this one is to simulate. Okay, uh, the one we just copy, the UI we just copy, right? And then now we want to get API. It's pro. Then we can find, we have some method, get or post. The post is you can post data with JSON format. So here we set it to JSON, and then now we can try. This is the report generator, and uh, this is day, the generator day, and the credential or not, maybe false. Okay, here are the username, CT, hey, sorry. And uh, this is phone number. And then we can have repeatable data, right? Here is repeatable. So we can copy that and generate the second and the third. Okay, we say ODF rocks. Okay. It's in Russell. Okay, and the, the third one is uh, the Brof is rock, rocks two. Okay, it's in okay. So we added the data and then we execute it. That means we just sent this post request, execute it. Then you can see this. This is exactly the, what he sent, what the servers I sent, okay? And, uh, oh, JSON data error, sorry, wait. Uh, JSON data error? Oh, here. Again. Okay, the code is okay. okay the code. And the, the URL is here. And we can try download it. Uh, this time we download it as ODT because it's generated report. So here is the generated report. Just it. So we just, uh, because uh, we have the URL here. So actually from the server side, what you need to do is only in the, when you need to generate a report, you just need to send this out. 
let us save it as another OTT file. We'll just use command line to set it out. And then it can be generated too. Okay, that's it. Okay, so let's get back here. So, and uh, really it's done. It's very simple. And uh, the most important, uh, the flow now becomes like this. When the users, the unit in the government needs to generate ODF reports, the first thing is that they can generate template themselves because only them knows what they want, right? And with the help of our template reader, and they can put fields here and there. And if uh, then after generate the templates, it just upload the template to the ODF API server. Just like what you see here. Here, right? And it will generate the API that you need to call. Okay? And uh, it will generate the API. Uh, who needs to know the API? Only the seed admin needs to know. And uh, now, this time, they don't need to install any other module in their servers. All they want is just to send a uh, URL, uh, UC, CURL or WGET to send the post data. So he just called the API and fill the data and it will generate the audio file that it can directly send to the user. It's true standard ODF files. Okay? So the whole, the whole flow become very simple and they don't need to worry about uh, we, have, we need to install so many modules. Okay? So the advantage is, uh, is very obvious. Uh, the first thing, of course, the server side does not need to rewrite the whole report generating module. Now it is use a uh, CRISPR report and it only generated an HTML file with DOC extension. But then, now they don't need to rewrite anything. They just need to call the API. And uh, actually, for the server side, it does not matter which language, programming language they use to, to create this server. Sometimes they will say, I oh, will have the module, but I'm written in Ruby, but this server is written in C++. And they, I don't know how to integrate them together. No, this time, because we are only just require HTTP, so it does not matter how to generate the server, the original server. And uh, okay, also the server does not need to maintain or generate, uh, upgrade the tools. And uh, if, if any of the templates needs to uh, update, you have new, uh, you need to change some fields, you just need to, here, here is the modify and you just need to upload it again. And it will create new API, and you just call with new API, that's all. So, you, you, uh, so no one would need to worry about the, uh, file, uh, uh, the data fields or the layout changes. It's just created by user and tell the admin that I update this template. Okay, they just need to replace the, replace the, the URL. So everything will be defined in the report templates which really use this report, okay? So, uh, I think this one is very important tool, especially for adopting ODT in, ODF in government. Because uh, actually, uh, uh, report, gener uh, report generation is an important part in, in, in the government. And uh, right now, they are still all in non-standard Microsoft file format. And uh, this tool will be this tool will be online this year and the, the code the code is here. We are open so have open source it so everyone can build your own server and try and of course patches are welcome. Okay, that's my demo. So uh, okay if you, uh, anyone have question but please speak slowly, okay? <laughs>
Ne? So, do we have any question? Mm -hmm. Plans to migrate into English? Uh, 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 yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, the the driven me in is in Chinese, but I think it's easy for you to understand that <laughs> so far. Yeah, but of course, maybe because we are uh, we do it for Taiwanese government, but of course it, it, we can um, try to make it international. And then maybe it's, uh, everyone who is interested in it can have to send patches. Yeah, of course. Okay? No question then. Thank you.